welcome again. Off for a, another adventure, as you can see. From what I'm wearing, you can probably guess where I'm going. I'm on the kayak today. Catawade on the River Stour in Essex. About to launch into this lovely river. It's very cloudy today, unfortunately, for the next few days of forecast cloud. But we're not supposed to get any rain until uh, tomorrow night, so hopefully it should be all okay. I've seen this before, but here's the kayak. Slightly different setup this time. Brought some fishing gear. I'm not sure we're going to be doing much fishing, but see how it goes. There's more about the kayak in today. Got the camping gear all packed underneath there. Going to stay out for one night. I've got both of my cameras. Going to be obviously doing plenty of filming on this. I also brought me still still camera. And this is all about relaxing and photography. This next two days. I'm going to launch, and then we can get going. It's a better spot for underwater. Temperature's a bit cold. Warmer temperature. Not very cold. Warmer at all. You don't want to go swimming, do you? We're getting further away from the road now, so I think it's becoming a lot more quieter. There's a few flowers coming up through the water. There's marsh marigolds. Sounds like man have almost gone. Just stay here for a while just to take it all in.
as you can see we've come to the part of the river that narrows in the winter time this opens right out it doesn't look like this obviously because we've got summertime growth going on it's a bit tight very lovely though the water is very clear I've got sunglasses on even though it's not sunny but they're polarizing sunglasses so I can it cuts out all the reflections and glare on the water and I can see underneath and the amount of the amount of fish in the water is unreal. It's completely clean in life. Oh, just coming up to the weir. This is the weir on the other side of that weir. This is where the, the saltwater part of the river meets the freshwater part of the river. Oh, we've got a fallen branch here. That's new. Might have to go round. Let's see what happens. Now we get, oh, just about touching. So we're almost across. That's it, we've gone there. Next time we'll go around. <laughs> Just enough cause enough issue. Yeah, this is where the I'll turn the camera. On the other side of there, that's the, the salt water section. The tidal part of the river. It's not far from here where I stopped overnight before. Going further up river today though. Has it got more time? And a bit more experience nowadays. But this is the more scenic part of the river. You can't go all the way up through unfortunately, you have to there's a couple of portage points. The portage points where a place where you can pull the kayak out of the river. There's quite a few of these along this um, on the river stair because of locks and weirs. Obviously, you can't they can't let people go across them because it's a bit dangerous. Well, locks you can't anyways because they're always shut. They're there for water control rather than actually letting boats go up and down. There's no actual boat traffic on this river because it's a bit small yeah just come up to Flatford now and the, and the lock in the distance there Yeah, probably. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's the only one, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. That's why I'm just going to sort of float, go around in here for a little bit, so you've got a bit of time. This is Flatford Mill. Made famous by John Constable. And these paintings. Used to be a working mill, now it's a tourist attraction.
the restaurant's cooking food. It's a nice smell wafting from that direction. We're now past Flatford. And going towards Dedham. Come the weekend, this will be absolutely round, especially on a nice summer's day. You get people picnicking on this river. It's a good place to come for a picnic, to be honest. If that's what you like doing. Me and the missus have been down here many times. You can walk all the way from Flatford to Dedham if you want. We can take a boat, you can hike um, on the weekends and during the school summer holidays they hire out rowing boats. You can have it for as long as you want. But what some people do, they, they hire a boat. There's another hireage point, hiring point at Dedham. So you, you hire it at Flatford or Dedham, row to the other one, get off. And then walk back. Or if you want to, obviously you can row back. Either way, it's a pleasant way to spend a few hours in the afternoon. Uh, next town along is this Dedham. Another nice place to visit. This is where you can pick up the boats or drop them off. It's only about forty-five minutes or an hour slow row to either end. Them two electric boats there, they're a recent addition. I think they've only been on the boat water a couple of years now. Obviously tourist boats again, but they're electric so they don't there's no environmental impact with them. It's a nice place to have a... There's a nice cafe and restaurant there. It's not cheap, but it's a really nice place to stop. Plenty of duck families on, on the water this year, so it's like a couple of young ones. This year's chicks that have grown up. They do all right out of the tourists being fed.
There's a car park right on the river, which is good for launching. Brought our granddaughter Emily up here many, many times. Let's feed the ducks. So there's a few people doing it now. Another working mill back in the days. It's all locked out again, so if you want to carry on going, you have to pull out. It's only a short walk down. Doesn't go anywhere, unfortunately, you have to pull out. <laughs> no, there's a, a lift out point you have to walk around. But yeah, there's, there's all the way along this river, it's the same because there's a lot of weirs and locks all the way along. There's no, there's no boat traffic, no need for them, they're just there to control the flow of the water. So we just pulled past um, Dead and Porridge. It's quite tiring pulling this heavy kayak that distance, unfortunately, but resting now, back in the water. Won't be long now before we start looking for a spot to stay. Time's moving on, and I'm getting 
tired. Used to go fishing on this part of the river many years ago. Many, many years ago. Riverbank fishing. We've got some sort of garden structure here. Mausoleum maybe? Who knows? No idea, I don't know if that's part of a, a big garden or what. Turn around so I can get it in the shop. I think it's just a river house, a river boat house at the side of the river. It's got um, stairs leading up to a set of seats. It's a possible space there, not much, not a very big space, but it's a possible space. Found a little spot for the evening, for the night, should I say. Not a great deal of room, but it's okay. Nice and quiet. My ramblings do seem to have attracted the natives though, so we've got, I've got some neighbours at the moment, but nice gentle creatures. I think they're just curious. The little ones are very cute. I pulled it out of the water. Just about to cook some dinner. I've got some normal favourites tonight. I've got a, a pasta pot noodle and a meat sausage. I'm also going to use some of that for tomorrow's breakfast. I'll film a little bit later on after I've set up a little bit. I'll set the cooker up so I can get some cooking done. We've got wraps, that's for tomorrow, breakfast. Got plenty of fruit in here tonight. Crisps, eggs for tomorrow. Kit Kat. This is the sausages. These are ideal for camping or wild camping, any sort of camping really. They don't need to be in the fridge until you open them. And even then, they're good for a, overnight. So basically I have half of it tonight with dinner and half of it cooked, sliced up with the egg tomorrow. Right there. Yeah, they don't need to be stored in the fridge. You can store them out of the fridge for as long as you want. I have a coffee now. Got some hot chocolate layer. Perfect. Two in one or three in one if you take sugar. I know I've mentioned these on all of the other camping videos, but still worth mentioning. No worried about carrying milk then. My cows have disappeared. I think they've got bored of looking at me and gone off to the field next door. Water's in the pasta. It's a shame it's not smelly vision because you can smell that and it's lovely. I, don't, I think it has, I think the green stuff in there is like chives. It gives it, gives it a slightly oniony flavour. It's really nice. I've already started on the sausage. And 
the coffee. Got some crisp later to go with it. And some sweets for dessert. I've got energy bars and things like that as well. I brought a good selection. Being on the kayak, kayak you're not so uh, limited to weight because obviously the, the kayak's taking the weight, you're not carrying anything. That's up to you what you take really. You could you could take enough supplies for several days. I might do that one one of these days, go out, stay on the river for several nights. This is what I now use for water. Two litre water bottle, gym bottle. BPA free, so it's safe to carry water without degrading. I find two litres is a roughly about right for one night's stay. Either this sort of camping or wild camping. It gives enough for free drinks and enough also for pot pasta and also the porridge, which I haven't got today, but. Yeah, between one and a half to two litres will cover all of that. thing I like to do when I go camping is uh, read. Find a nice quiet spot, you've got some food on the go and coffee or drink or whatever you want to drink. What better way to spend a bit of time in the countryside of reading? Apparently reading Arthur Ransom book, Coot Club. Or set on the North Abroad, so it's in a similar setting to what I'm in now, really. Arthur Ransom was a ch children's adventure writer. Most famous for the Swallows and Amazon series. A couple of the characters in this are actually in the, some of the later Swallows and Amazons story so they, they are sort of linked all together. He wrote quite a lot of books about this area because he um, lived lived in this area for um, part of his life. A place called Pinmill, doing a bit of sailing. Obviously I do like sailing as well so that's what, where what also what our interest lies. If you've never read any Arthur Ransom before, you thoroughly recommend it. The first one to start with is Swallows and Amazons. They are they were originally designed for like children's adventure stories, but they appeal to adults just as much as well. Just getting the sleep system sorted out. Before it starts getting too dark. Before I go through what I'm using. This is the, I'm not going to be sleeping here, I'm actually going to be sleeping just here. Facing down, feet downwards, head up here. Nice and flat down there. Not using the tent or tarp. No rain forecast, so neither should be necessary. So, go through the system. Here's the Army, British Army MTP bivvy bag. Waterproof Gore-Tex bag. Nice and easy to use. Can be added all right around the head. With a drawstring. So you can bring it in nice and tight around your face. Underneath that, and keep nice and soft. We've got the Climate Insulated Static V sleeping mat. Already inflated. Might need to adjust it, but this is my summer bag. It's quite a cheap bag, to be honest. It's an Andes free, made by Andes, Andes 300. Although it's it's closer, they call it a Andes Nevada 300. Although I would say it's closer to a 200. A lot of the sleeping bags, you have to, um, the cheaper ones especially, you have to 
really watch. It's good for summer, but you certainly wouldn't want to use it in the winter. You'd, you'd end up getting bloody cold. But they do seem to be well overrated. But this, yeah, it, it goes down nice and small. It's supposed to be three season, but I would say it's more two season. Three at a very push. But the weather is quite mild now. It doesn't go, doesn't go below in, this, into single figures at night at the moment, so you don't need too much. You get too hot, if anything. Tonight, I'm testing out a new pillow, Van Gogh Comfort. It's called. It's basically two pillows in one. It's foam. But it's also got a, a valve to inflate it as well, so it's like a dual, it's foam and inflated. I had a cheap pillow before, like a foam one, but um, like polyester filling, but it, to be honest it was rubbish. I think a decent pillow does help you get a decent night's sleep. So we're going to be testing this tonight, they're, only, they're quite cheap, I actually got this in the sale, it's only £10 in the sale. But they're not that expensive to buy anyways. You don't obviously when you if you're first starting out something like this is not really necessary. But it is a decent upgrade when you've got a little bit, you know, you can when you start buying more stuff. Other than that, that's it, that's the whole sleep system. All the stuff's gonna go on there. I've got a couple of waterproof covers to put over it, just stop the damp. Although it doesn't feel as there's a lot of damp in the air tonight. Cooking stuff's almost done. Gonna do a hot chocolate later. We've had plenty to eat. More or less settled for the night. Gonna move the sleeping pod in, in position when I need it to. Gonna have a hot chocolate a little bit later. Or cold in the night. Enjoyed a nice meal. Had some treats, had some cider. I read four chapters in my book. enjoying the peace and quiet. There's a lot of fish keep rising on the river. I know as a fisherman himself the best time to go fishing is either dusk and dawn. That's certainly the case here as well. I brought a little light for the GoPro. It seems to do a good job. Midnight visitor. Probably wonder what's going on. So I just come back on. Just made myself a hot chocolate. It's around about ten o'clock. Can be sitting in enjoying this. Enjoy the rest of the evening. Hopefully this is showing up. It's the first time I'm using this light. I'm quite impressed with it to be honest. It's only on half power at the moment. It seems to light up things very nicely. I switch on to full power. That's full power. Lighting up the other side of the riverbank. Yeah, half is half is plenty. Going to be bringing the the bed so it's here once I pack up. It's going to be a nice night. The wind has completely died. There's absolutely no wind whatsoever. It got a bit cool earlier, but I'll put, I'll put an extra layer on them all right now. Should be a nice peaceful night. There's a little bit of road noise in the distance, but hopefully that will calm down. Other than that, it's just animals. Lots of fish moving in the water. Sign you off for today. This is going to be a two-part video because of, because of the ambient stuff I've been catching, and obviously the kayaking down the river. I hope you've enjoyed the rides today. It's to tomorrow, and I'll see you in the morning in part two.